all Dixie here. Today I'd like to introduce several new pieces of gear that I'm planning on testing out when I start my Penhody Trail through hike later this month. As I mentioned in last week's video, I'd already be out there, but I've been waiting for my dad to get out of the hospital before I go. And I know I've already told y'all about some different shelters I'll be trying out, a different pack, but without further delay, these are some of the additional items that I'm looking forward to trying out. First things first, I'll be testing out a new sleeping pad. It's the AXL Air made by Big Agnes. And I'm pretty excited to test out a new sleeping pad because I've been stuck on the Neo Air X Lite made by Thermarest for years now. And the sleeping pad that I'm used to is the short version, so it only spans from my head down to my knees and weighs eight ounces. But this sleeping pad made by Big Agnes is only 1.6 ounces heavier and it's 72 inches long. So for only about an ounce and a half more weight, I'm gonna have a full length sleeping pad. The width of the pad is 20 inches and the thickness is a little bit thicker than the pad I'm used to at 3.25 inches. The R value for the AXL is three, but I also appreciate that on the packaging of this sleeping pad, they say it's meant for temperatures above 35 degrees. It also says in the description of this sleeping pad that it is treated to kind of prevent antimicrobial growth on the inside. If any of y'all have ever had a sleeping pad that you inflate with your mouth, you'll notice that some of your mouth funk goes on the inside and grows this interesting little culture. So I guess they put some kind of treatment on the inside to prevent that. The cost of this sleeping pad used to be well over $100, but Big Agnes and Amazon have it listed right now anywhere from just under $100 up to about $105. I've never been one to backpack with a pillow, although I've heard it makes a huge difference in sleep. So on the Penhody Trail, I'll be testing out two different types of pillows. One of those is the Eros Ultralight Regular Pillow made by Sea to Summit. It weighs 2.1 ounces. It costs about $40. When I inflated it, it was very easy to inflate. There is a valve meant for inflation and then one to deflate it just to make both sides of that easy. So it's convenient to inflate and deflate. That way you're not having to try to race the air to put the plug in before it all comes rushing out. The outside of the pillow has a nice feel to it. It doesn't have a crunchy or like sticky feeling. It's It's got kind of a, a fuzzy soft feeling, if you will. I can't imagine much worse than having a pillow stick to your face while you're trying to sleep. I guess you could always throw some piece of clothing over it, but that's something I've always worried about with these inflatable pillows. But it seems like they've already thought about that and remedied that situation. The next pillow is the Flex Air Inflatable Pillow, and you can get these on lightsmith.com. That's L-I-T-E smith.com. I heard about these from one of my patrons. He said that he always went without pillows because he was wanting to be as just ultra light as possible but at some point he thought well i also want to be as comfortable as possible while being as lightweight as possible so he found these pillows on lightsmith he says that they inflate using a straw i've ordered them i haven't gotten them in yet but you can get a bundle of three large pillows they come in small and large uh, for $6.95. So they are really, really cheap. Now he said, I don't know how durable they're gonna be, but for that price, it's a pretty good deal. And you can also get one large individual pillow for $2.60. The small pillow weighs 0.5 ounces. Yes, a half ounce. And then the large pillow weighs 0.9 ounces, so just under an ounce. This pillow is also made out of a comfortable, non-woven type fabric, so it's not something that's gonna be just slimy and sweaty and stick to your face. Next, I'll be trying out two different types of trekking poles, and I truly love my Black Diamond carbon fiber trekking poles, but there could always be something out there that I like even more. So I'm gonna broaden my horizons and try two different trekking poles that kind of piqued my interest. First, I ordered the Z-Pax carbon fiber trekking poles. Now, I thought it was interesting. You can order these as a single trekking pole or as the pair. So if you're somebody who prefers a walking stick, but you want something a little more lightweight, then they do offer just a single trekking pole for $59. For the pair, it's $99, and together they weigh 14 and a half ounces. They have sturdy clasp locks, padded wrist straps, and all of the typical bells and whistles 
of a set of trekking poles and they also offer a one year warranty on any defects and breakages. These trekking poles are available with court grips or foam grips. I personally prefer the court grips, but I did get an email today saying that they were supposed to start shipping court grip trekking poles today. They've kind of been on back order, but that's now been delayed until the end of the month. So I'll probably start out with the next set of trekking poles that I want to introduce. And those are the Lecky Micro Vario Carbon Pole, the women's version. Some of these names that they use for different pieces of gear, it's just, it's like a tongue twister. Anyway, these are carbon fiber poles that are highly regarded. I've never had a set of Lucky Trekking Poles, but they are a well-respected brand in the backpacking community. So I figured I might as well go ahead and test them out. Outdoor Gear Lab actually had the women's pair ranked above the men's version and the black diamonds that I typically use. So I figured why not try those out? The main benefit that I saw to these trekking poles is if you're gonna be traveling and you need them to be very packable, they do break down or fold down. They also have the lever locks that I prefer. Now the women's version does not have as much height possibility as the men's. So they only range from 100 centimeters to 120 centimeters. Some of the shelters that I use that set up with trekking poles recommend setting up the trekking pole to about 122 centimeters. So hopefully these will still work even though they're a couple of centimeters shy of what is recommended for the shelter, but I'll let y'all know. The only negative aspect that I immediately saw to these trekking poles, at least for me personally, are they're only available in the foam handles, but as long as it's not the rubber ones, we're good. And if you're wondering why I say that, the foam still at least kind of absorbs some of your sweat, where the rubber handles, I feel like it's just all right there between your hand and the grip, and it makes them slick and gross and slimy, and I just don't prefer that. And moving on, I'll be testing out another new puffy. I've already mentioned the Mont Bell puffy that I'll be trying. I first looked into the EOS down jacket made by Feathered Friends. It has 900 fill power goose down that's ethically sourced. It weighs nine ounces, was in the typical price range, the upper 300s for a down jacket. And it just seemed like it had a lot of good reviews. But unfortunately, they don't have any available in medium in any of the colors I prefer. So I'm currently on the waiting list. If they get back to me quickly, then I'll go with that jacket. But otherwise, I'm gonna test out a puffy down made by Arcteryx. It's a Cerium LT hooded down jacket. And I always go with puffy coats that have a hood. Most of these brands and styles have an option without a hood, but I prefer the hood. I just feel like it keeps my neck and my ears warmer and I can still wear a beanie with the hood if I prefer, but it's just a personal preference thing. The Arcteryx Puffy Coat is insulated with 850 fill power goose down. And I thought it was interesting that they also use synthetic insulation in the areas most prone to dampness because as many of you probably know, if down gets wet, it's pretty much worthless. But if synthetic insulation gets wet, it still has some insulating properties. Obviously, regardless, you don't want to be wearing soaking wet clothing in cold temperatures. My go-to puffy for a long time has been the Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisper, so I'm pretty excited to try some new things. The Arcteryx puffy is supposed to be a bit more wind resistant and water resistant slash repellent than my Ghost Whisper and also just a bit warmer in general. The claimed weight of this puffy coat is 9.3 ounces and it generally runs in the upper 300s price range, so 380 or so. But right now on Amazon, they have them for about $100 less as long as you don't want the black or yellowish mustard color. Another clothing item I'm gonna be checking out is a new brand of socks. I don't know if y'all have heard of them, but the name is Farm to Feet, which I thought was a really cool name, like Farm to Table, and I actually called them Farm to Table socks a couple times. <laughs> that would be weird. Anyway, they are made here in the USA, kind of like the darn tough socks made in Vermont. And I feel like in general, they're gonna be pretty comparable to Darn Tough Socks, which has been my go-to brand for a while. The Farm to Feet socks that I ordered are the ankle version. They're made out of merino wool, which is not an itchy type of wool. They're actually anti-itch. 
and soft, very comfortable. Wool helps regulate the temperature of your feet, so hopefully they help keep your feet warm in cooler temperatures and prevent them from getting too gross and sweaty in warmer temperatures. And also they're naturally antimicrobial, so it'll help with any odors and other foot funk that could develop down there. The particular pair I got cost $18, which I know sounds steep for socks, but when you're backpacking, it's really nice to have a good pair of socks. But again, I just wanted to try something different to mix it up a little bit, and I've heard really good things about these socks. And last but not least, I'm still kind of up in the air about this one. As many of y'all know, I got the Innovate Terra Ultras, the G260s to test out this year. And as everything's been delayed, they've now come out with a new shoe, the G270. And it's got a little bit thicker stack height and they've made some other changes based on some feedback that they got from the 260s. So I'm thinking about selling the 260s and purchasing the 270s. I still haven't decided if I'm gonna bother with that, but if any of y'all have used the G260s and now the G270s, I would love to hear your feedback on that. All right, y'all, that is all I have for you today. If any of you have used any of these gear items, I would love to hear your feedback on that in the comments below. And before I go, I just wanna say thank y'all so much for being patient with me. This year has been crazy for many of us and my plans have kept getting delayed for one reason or another. So I'm excited to actually get out on trail and test these things so I can come back and tell y'all what worked and what didn't. Thanks so much for watching. Don't get to subscribe before you go and we will see y'all next time.